and that's good for them, but it isn't very good for patients. Talk a little bit about certificate of need and, and what it is and why it's bad. It's kind of like McDonald's having to ask Burger King for permission to build on the opposite corner. Because when, you, when, when a hospital or a, a, a M, MRI, an imaging center, when, when doctors wanted to open those, a surgery center, they had to make an application. That application then was public knowledge it was uh, it was announced, and their all their competitors got to see it, and their competitors got to weigh in. That's why we had instances of hospitals in some areas taking 10, 15 years for approval. The, the area needed the beds, they needed the hospital, but the process was so cumbersome, and your competitor, through lawsuits and various other methods, they could uh, stall that to the point that you just, you know, you, you couldn't get the services you need. Americans are capable of achieving extraordinary things when they have the freedom and opportunity to do so. This is American Potential, and here's your host, Jeff Crank. Well, thanks for joining us on another episode of American Potential. We've talked so much about health care over the past many years. We've talked a little bit about this particular issue, certificate of need, but we're gonna get into a great example of it here. Now, have you ever wondered why sometimes it can take several months to get an appointment with a doctor or a specialist, and if that is normal for other people all around the country? Well, today's guest lives in South Carolina, and when he and a friend who lives in Florida had the same health issue, his friend was able to get an appointment and surgery in over a week while he had to wait months. Now, during his appointments, he found out South Carolina had something called certificate of need, and that was the reason for the delays in his treatment. Now, being a radio show host, he was able to use his platform to educate the public on certificate of need and ask them to get involved. He also took the opportunity uh, anytime he had a state le uh, legislator, a lawmaker on his show, to ask them if they would support repealing certificate of need, which would allow patients quicker access to care, along with lowering the cost of health care. Today's guest and Americans for Prosperity South Carolina worked together, along with others, to get certificate of need repealed this year. I want to welcome Joey Hudson, who is the host of Just the Truth podcast. Joey, thanks for being with us. It is a pleasure. It's a pleasure to always uh, join some of my friends with Americans for, for Prosperity. I'm a big fan of you guys. Well, listen, first of all, I'm violating my rule. I have a rule to never have somebody with a better sounding voice on this show as a guest, <laughs> and I'm already violating it, but what can I do? So, uh, welcome uh, to the show. <laughs> well, that, that's very kind of you. You, you know, we don't know how we hear, uh, how we hear, uh, you know, other people hear us, of course. Sure. And I've never thought that I had a radio voice. Radio was sort of a second career for me. And, and it, uh -huh. it's, it's interesting because, you know, we're out and about from time to time and my wife will be, will be talking and someone will say, I recognize your voice. And it's just a very odd thing, but, uh, uh, you know, radio's fun, podcasting's fun, and, uh, you know, we're able to communicate with people. And as you mentioned a minute ago, uh, what a platform uh, that proved to be for us to uh, get some good done here as far as health care in South Carolina. Yeah, I love that aspect of it. And I, I, you and I met each other a few weeks back. Uh, we had never met each other before, but we sat next to each other at a dinner and we kind of as we started talking, we talked a little bit about uh, certificate of need and your involvement in South Carolina and your your um, your show there. And uh, I mentioned to you that I had a talk show for 14 years and I loved that was the thing I loved about it most. Right. Was the ability to engage people for the purpose of 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 changing public policy, uh, changing bad decisions, bad government decisions. And it's one of the things that Americans for Prosperity does. And so I was so happy to hear you, uh, you know, kind of teaming up both uh, through your show and yourself as an activist with Americans for Prosperity and working on this uh, cert certificate of need issue. Yeah, it was. This was a typical case of a lot of people coming together to solve a problem that we had in South Carolina. Uh, 
quite often people get frustrated and, and they think, well, my voice doesn't matter. Well, this effort to repeal certificate of need in South Carolina proved that wrong. Uh, let me give you a quick summary. Uh, a couple of years ago, uh, myself, and you mentioned this in, in the intro, myself and, and a dear friend, colleague of mine, uh, Mike Gallagher, he's on the radio as well. Within yes. a few days of one another, we were uh, diagnosed with the same type of hernia and we're told that we needed surgery. I mean, it's just crazy. I'm in South Carolina. He's down in Florida right. and we, we both have, have this same, uh, this, this, this same hernia. So Mike talks with his surgeon. I talk with mine. Mike talks with his on a Tuesday. He has his surgery on Friday. I talk with mine around the same time. And they're talking uh, maybe a couple of weeks, three weeks. Uh, we're, we're not quite sure. Now, at this point, I was in so much pain, I was not able to work. wasn't able to do really anything. And I'm just praying for, for this surgery. And the, the surgeon explained to me, he said, well, you know, I would come in and do this at night on the weekends, but I got to have an OR. And I'm at their mercy to get the operating room. All I can do is request it and wait for them to assign me an operating room, then we'll get this done for you. And as I started digging around and, and talking about it, uh, I realized that the reason he couldn't get an OR uh, just right away is because some of the larger hospital systems, uh, to, to keep competition out of the area, uh, they were really being strict with the use of the operating rooms. Uh, they wanted the, the demand to far exceed the supply. They had empty OR uh, ORs there not not being used simply because they would rather have a week or two backup uh, than to have potentially a, an operating room not being used but being staffed. Uh, I, I just I, I couldn't believe it, and I was then I then learned that the reason this was able to happen is because of this archaic law called certificate of need. I really wasn't that familiar with it. Got very familiar with it over the next couple of years, but as I talked about this with my radio listeners, uh, I started hearing horror stories of other people having the same issue I did. Eventually I got the surgery. Unfortunately, I got to do it again in about three months because I still had some issues. Went through the same thing the next time with a different surgeon, but the same thing, you know, waiting a couple of weeks to, to, get, to get access to the OR so they could get this repaired. Finally they did, but I was on a mission by then. Yeah. Well, and let's just talk for the listeners. Let's let them understand what certificate of need is. It's it's essentially a government permission slip, right? You have to prove yeah. if you want to open, you know, an MRI facility or a, a surgical center or something in a state that has certificate of need. You have to prove uh, you have to go and ask the government for a permission slip so that they can give you the right to go build that facility. And it's used in a lot of cases by the people who already own those facilities, an MRI facility or a surgical center, let's say. Uh, it's used by those companies a lot of times to keep competitors out of the market, and that's yep. good for them, but it isn't very good for patients. Talk a little bit about certificate of need and, and what it is and why it's bad. Well, here's the analogy that I used over and over again. Uh, in, in about a year and a half's time, every chance that I had to talk about it on my radio show, I did. I often would have members of the South Carolina House, South Carolina Senate as guests. Before I let them go, I don't care what we were talking about, I would, I would always work the conversation around to certificate of need and ask them, point blank, can I count on your vote to repeal certificate of need? So this, this law had been on the books for many, many decades. And as you said, it, it really played a big part in stifling competition in, in the Medicare, uh, in the healthcare field. Here's the simple explanation that I use with my radio listeners. It's kind of like McDonald's having to ask Burger King for permission to build on the opposite corner. Because okay. when you, when, when a hospital, or a, a, a MRI, an imaging center, when, when doctors wanted to open those, a surgery center, they had to make an application uh, with the South Carolina Department of the Health. That application then was public knowledge. It was, uh, it was announced, and all their competitors got to see it, and their competitors got to weigh in. 
That's why we had instances of hospitals in some areas taking 10, 15 years for approval. The, the area needed the beds. They needed the hospital, but the process was so cumbersome and your competitor uh, through through lawsuits and various other methods, they could uh, stall that to the point that you just, you know, you, you couldn't get the services you need. In, in my friend Mike Gallagher's case, Florida had repealed certificate of need six, seven years or so ago, and his surgeon explained to him, you know, I have choices here. I can, I can do your surgery here. I can do your surgery here. We have these surgery centers that are available for us. I never have a problem getting an OR. Not the same here in South Carolina. Yeah. Well, and again, what does this do to the patient, right? And, and uh, you know, you had a very different experience than Mike Gallagher had because of certificate of need. So right. how long did you have to, how long did you talk about certificate of need and encourage lawmakers to support its repeal before it actually got repealed? Well, my, uh, my surgery was in uh, 2021. The, as the they started a new session in January of 2022, uh, I, I, I eventually learned that this was an issue that had been ongoing for years. The South Carolina House had passed a version of repeal uh, several times over the last decade. The real problem had been the South Carolina Senate. Well, in 2022, as they started the session, we had some senators who were ready to to introduce the the, the repeal legislation. They did. They quickly passed it, sent it over to the, to the South Carolina House, where the then speaker, Jay Lucas, uh, set up a, a special committee, uh, to, to an ad hoc committee, to study this. Now, you know what happens when, when you have a study committee. Uh, <laughs> sure. But they, they, they had hearings and, and, and started working on this. We, uh, uh, Americans for Prosperity, you, you guys were always there encouraging people to speak up. Uh, I, I was on the radio, a lot of other groups around the state. We had the votes. We, we had, uh, in fact, no one I ever spoke with said, I will not support this. So we thought that we had this repealed in uh, uh, that, that year. We got down to the literally the last few days of the session, and it was not reported out of committee. Again, we're hearing the votes are there on the floor to pass this. We just got to get it out of the committee uh, to the floor did not happen. We're standing around thinking, what just happened? How, how did this happen? Until we learn within a few days that our speaker was going to re retire from politics. Guess where he was going to go to work? He'd been offered a good job, vice president of government affairs for the largest health care provider in South Carolina. One of the ones who was opposing <laughs> repealing the <laughs> sure need. How convenient. Sure. Uh, yeah. and, and our state law says that, that you a, a legislator cannot lobby for one year uh, after leaving the, the legislature. So they're, they're hiring this guy uh, for a year. He can't really do anything. So the next year we're ready, which was, which was this year, 2023. We started uh, in early January. Again, Senate already passed it. We just needed to get it through the House. Uh, we had a lot of people calling. You guys had people calling other groups. Uh, again, I had a, a key word on my text line and, and I, my listeners, the call to action was to call, email, uh, visit with your legislator. And we were able to get that passed this year. And the thing is, on the final vote, it was unanimous, not a single vote against it. And we're going to see a lot of changes in healthcare. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's too soon for us to see those things yet. This, this was literally just back, back in June. The governor signed the, the bill in the summer. But uh, we already have. I, I was speaking with some doctor friends of mine over the weekend. They, they uh, have gotten approval for, uh, for some zoning issues and things where they want to build some uh, surgery centers, imaging centers. Those things are starting to happen. People in South Carolina are going to start seeing a real change in health care uh, in, in the next few years. Well, and again, because you decided, uh, to, to, to really push this issue and you join forces with, with others, Americans for prosperity and many others, right. To, to really push this right. issue. Otherwise it would still be there. Uh, certificate of need would still be there. There are many States that, uh, that I talked to, uh, I talked to the governor of Alaska about this and they, 
you know, they always say, well, but we're different. Our state is different. We need this. We've got rural areas that are underserved. And none of that makes any sense whatsoever. The free market works in rural areas and it works in urban areas. Um, And so your your thoughts on that? I mean, states ought to be embracing this uh, as a way to help consumers with regards to health care. Absolutely. And and there's a lot of studies that have been done in states that have repealed certificate of need and and how it has opened up competition within health care. That was one of the arguments that was used in South Carolina as well, uh, that, you know, some of your smaller hospitals, they're going to close. Uh, you're not going to have access to health care. Uh, and, and some of the bigger health care organizations, uh, they are the ones who were doing mail pieces, doing uh, digital advertising. And, uh, and, and they were lobbying their legislators or legislators in those areas saying, there's a chance that your hospital is going to be closed if this happens. Uh, just, just not true. Uh, everywhere, every state that has repealed certificate of need pretty quickly has seen a, an increase and access to health care, whether it be, again, surgery centers, whether it be imaging, plus a, a, a more competitive cost. One of the state mm-hmm. senators who worked uh, hand-in-hand with us on this, uh, he, he gave me a study, and I was just blown away with the cost of an MRI. Uh, we were seeing MRIs costing uh, $1,800 to $3,000, depending on where you were and what you needed. Uh, the state senator shared with me a study that showed uh, in, in – states where certificate of need was not a thing, people were getting MRIs for $300. Now think about that. $300 versus right. 1800 to $3,000, that's a big difference. Yeah, but you could see why if you're an MRI company, you'd really like certificate of need and the ability to keep others out of the market, can't you, Joey? <laughs> well, if, if you are a, yeah, if, if you're an imaging, you own an imaging center, then yes, that, that's a way to control competition. Uh, sure. But, uh, you know, some of the doctors, though, who had initially opposed this, as we got into it and, and we educated them, and every time we had a public hearing, and that was a number of times, uh, you know, new details would come forward. Uh, when we finally got to the end, uh, I, I don't know if we had really changed their mind or, or turned their, their uh, beliefs in this, or if they just realized it was a foregone conclusion that, most of the people in South Carolina, I mean, you, you had people who had never heard of certificate of need when they did learn, it's like a light goes off and they're thinking, Hmm, well, that's why I had to wait three months for this or four months for that. That's why this costs so much. Uh, and we really saw a, a groundswell of support for this. And, and these doctors, some of them uh, who had been hearing, well, you know, the hospital might close or we might have to close this clinic as they're better educated themselves because, you know, they're, they're just treating patients every day. They're, they're doing what they feel, feel like they were called to do, and that's take care of people. Uh, they, they don't like to get involved in politics uh, to, to a large degree. Uh, and a lot of the doctors, after they were educated and we were able to talk with them, they thought, you know, this is not a bad thing. We're going to support you on this. And, and they did. And, and, again, you could just see – that the attitudes of some of those legislators in some of those areas where they've been told, well, your hospital might close, uh, they realize that's eh, not going to happen. We're, if, 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 if anything's going to happen here, we're going to have more access for a better cost. Now, you, you alluded to this. So you talked about it. Uh, you set up a text line for your listeners, and I love this, uh, yes. to be able to get in contact with their lawmakers. How many people do you think use that? Thousands and thousands. I, I, I don't, I don't have a, a total. Uh, I wish I had kept up with, with that, but literally, um, when, when I'm sitting there during the show and I have a, a key word and the, and the listener texted in, uh, the new one just pushes the old one down. It would be like a slot machine, <laughs> Jeff. I mean, <laughs> as, as I would, uh, is when I'd say text the keyword con C O N, uh, it, it would just light up because, People, again, uh, people could see themselves in this situation. In my case, my listeners, uh, it, you know, you've, you've done radio, you know this, you develop that relationship with your listener. Uh, most, all, most often, you never meet them face-to-face, uh, but still, they listen to you. Uh, m- maybe they text you, maybe they email you, maybe they call in from time to time, but you develop that relationship and I had so many listeners who would just uh, see me out and about at church or an event or whatever, 
they would say, thank you for helping us get involved in this and, and repeal certificate of need. Uh, and they'd tell me their story and a very similar story like mine, where they had to wait months and months. And, uh, you know, th- I was out seven weeks total uh, uh, during my ordeal and right. seven weeks that I missed when that was, had I been in an area that I'd had access to uh, a surgery center. And I even thought about at one point going to another state. Uh, there were a couple of times there I w- just wasn't able to travel, but people overall, they thought, you know, thank you for being a voice in our community. Thank you for giving us a voice, telling us how to do this. And we got it done together. You know, what's inter- so interesting, I think, about the certificate of need issue is there needs to be a little bit of education about what it is, because people know there's something not right in the healthcare system when they're told, oh, you have to wait all this this length of yes. time. But once they, you know, you can educate folks as to what certificate of need is and how it impacts that decision, it, it really does have a huge impact on people's lives. But most people don't just automatically see it because it's kind of a weird thing, certificate of need. What does that even mean? I mean, that education aspect of it is really important too, isn't it? It's a big uh, part of it because, and, and by the way, not just the average citizen. But our leaders as well, the legislators, uh, they had to be educated uh, as well because it's a very complex issue. And it was designed that way on purpose because they, uh, you know, the powers that be, the ones that it benefits, primarily the big healthcare systems, uh, they don't want the competition. They want to be able to control that. So uh, when we started breaking it down, and again, my my analogy of, of Burger King having asked McDonald's permission, that that kind of got legs. And, and we heard that over and over again. And, and people just couldn't believe that their health care, uh, that their their health was affected by the health care system. Uh, you know, here's, a, here's some stories. I mean, I, I had one lady who needed surgery and it was going to be six months away. She was, she was kind of like me. Uh, she, she was in pain. She really, her, her quality of life was, was horrible. She was, she was barely able to take care of her kids and, and, uh, and, and work at her job. But that's, you know, that's the situation she found herself in. She too was looking at, well, maybe I should go to another state. She just didn't have the, the resources to do that. Uh, when this kind of first came up, and I was trying to see various specialists because they're trying to rule one thing out for another. And, you know, it, it seemed like, well, I would go to one doctor. It would take me, he, he would refer me to another. It'd take me three weeks, four weeks, five weeks to get an appointment with the other one. And, and this, Jeff, keep in mind, I probably had it a little bit better because I was a big mouth on the radio. <laughs> and, and they knew I was going to be talking about it. Right. But, but imagine those people who did not have uh, some of the resources that I had uh, and, and the, the pain that they had to go through. But the bottom line is if, if, if you educate people and you make it simple for them, you educate the legislators of what this is doing. Hey, and, and let the legislators put, the, put themselves in, in uh, this place. I, I had a legislator friend who, uh, who needed some medical care himself during this process. And he kind of got a, a firsthand knowledge too, of just how it, how it can work. But, uh, again, I keep going back and, and I'm just so proud of the work of so many different groups around the state, proud of the partnership we had with Americans for prosperity. Uh, Candace Carroll, your state director here, she and I were like on speed dial with one another, <laughs> but it really is, you know, the, the, the good thing is yes, people are going to get better care. They're going to get more affordable care, but but the best part for me was and being being a political junkie was how it came about and that that this was a grassroots effort and people were able to make a difference. Okay, now Americans for Prosperity has put together a video talking about the repeal of certificate of need in South Carolina. Video is going to be on the road, and when it's done, there'll be a panel discussion with you and several others. Why is it important for you to be involved in that tour and help tell the story? Well, I think people need to know what happened and how we got to this point uh, and, and some of the stories that, that, we, that are shared in that video. It primarily follows a, a lady in South Carolina who, um, like me, 
needed help. Uh, and in her case, it was a child and her husband and j- just, just a heart wrenching story. But I think it shows several things. Number one, back to what I was just saying is that we did, uh, with, with the help of a lot of people around the state, we found a problem and we were able to fix it. Uh, and, and that, that's the, the big thing. Uh, and hopefully people in other states who see this video and who have certificate of need can realize, well, you know, we can do the same thing. We, we can make a change here in our state as well. Uh, but, but it also, uh, out from a side of, of uh, certificate of need, it, it kind of educates you too of what to expect and what you can do now and what to be looking for as far as improvement in healthcare in, in South Carolina. Uh, better access, more affordability. Uh, And and it's really an educational tool for people to see, you know, be watching for this because you're going to really see some changes in healthcare uh, and and those providers in South Carolina probably pretty quickly as well. All right, uh, Joey, tell us a little bit about your podcast too, Just the Truth Podcast. Yes, well, Just the Truth is – as we d- discussed, uh, I, I did radio for a, a long, long time. Still do radio on the uh, Salem Radio Network, but uh, the podcast is something that I can uh, just dig a little deeper. As you know, a radio show, you kind of go in eight, ten-minute segments. Uh, <laughs> but with uh, Just the Truth, we can spend more time together and uh, dig deeper into those issues. It, it's a lot of fun, as you know, and uh, you know it, it's, uh, it, it's just a, sort of a continuation of the radio show and staying in touch with with people who uh, who have walked with me not only with certificate of need but a lot of other issues that we have tackled together and made difference in South Carolina. So uh, uh, just the truth, we, you know, uh, we get to the truth. We we keep digging till we find the truth. Excellent. Well, listen, hey, thanks for for joining us, but thanks mostly for for taking up this cause and for partnering with Americans for Prosperity and all the other activists and and organizations and groups in South Carolina and seeing this through to the end. It's what I love about uh, this podcast and the stories we tell is you got involved in this to, to fix a wrong because it, it kind of affected you, but you didn't do it for you. You, you very unselfishly did it for the people of South Carolina and uh, everybody will benefit because of the, the great work that you did. So thanks for doing that, Joey. Well, it, it's an honor. And, and again, I cannot stress enough how effective Americans for Prosperity was here in South Carolina under the leadership of Candace Carroll and others. You guys are doing great work all around the country. And if this story will encourage other states to do likewise, uh, then we all win. Oh, that's great, Joey. Thank you so much. And and look, this is just another example of some of the reforms we can make in healthcare. And we've talked about those on other episodes and we'll talk about it in the future Healthcare is one of those things that really impacts the American people, impacts your family budget, but there's changes that we can make, some of them small, some of them large, that we could make to the system that would just make it so much better, more choice uh, and better accountability within the healthcare system. And thanks to Joey and uh, the Americans for Prosperity South Carolina chapter for their work on this. Hey, thanks for joining us. Liberty and Freedom can be easily taken for granted. Don't take them for granted. Go out there like Joey did and all the other volunteers in South Carolina and get the, get this changed and defend liberty and freedom. Thanks for being with us. Thank you for listening to American Potential. You may listen to more stories from Americans working every day to expand freedom and opportunity in their communities by visiting AmericanPotential.com.